What do you know about drylands? Or rather, what do you think you know about drylands? That they are hostile, prone to conflict, remote and barren places, slowly but surely being taken over by rampant desertification? Or that dryland populations are poor, conservative and adverse to change? While drylands are confronted with undeniable challenges, they also possess valuable assets that can help the world tackle some of the greatest challenges it currently faces. Drylands are hardly negligible. They cover 41% of the Earth's land surface and span nearly 100 countries. They are home to 2.3 billion people, one third of all humanity. 90% of these people live in developing countries, and half of them are poor. Dryland populations have adapted to environmental hardship and scarce resources. Their traditional knowledge could provide precious insights for climate change adaptation and mitigation strategies. Dryland species and ecosystems are especially resilient. One third of our food crops originated there, including wheat, maize, potatoes and lentils. Today, drylands are a major contributor to the world's breadbasket, with 44% of all the world's cultivated lands and 50% of the livestock. Drylands can also play a big role in mitigating climate change. Globally, 36% of the carbon stored in terrestrial ecosystems is stored in drylands, mostly in soils. This amount could be increased with sustainable land management practices. Yet drylands have long been neglected by investment and development interventions. How can the world meet sustainable development goals if the livelihoods of one third of the world population do not improve? Drylands offer many untapped opportunities for both public and private sector investments. Agroforestry, for example, can provide dryland farmers with fruit, firewood, construction materials, etc., and help combat land degradation and desertification. Agroforestry can also capture up to 40% as much carbon as primary forests and generate as much as $10 billion on carbon markets. Globally, the market for high-value natural products is worth $65 billion a year and is growing. The trade of aloe vera alone, which is originally sourced from drylands, is estimated at $80 million. Drylands also attract increasing number of tourists. Beautiful preserved landscapes and biodiversity are key to the development of eco and agro-tourism especially, which offers significant economic opportunities for dryland communities. It drives investment for infrastructure, creates jobs and a market for local produce and handicrafts, and supports the conservation of biodiversity and the ecosystems it depends on. Many more opportunities exist. Neglecting drylands is turning our back on one third of humanity and on 41% of the world's total land area and the resources it holds. More and better investments for the sustainable development of drylands will not only benefit the 2.3 billion people who live there, they will contribute towards reducing poverty, hunger and malnutrition worldwide as well as mitigating climate change and preserving our planet and its resources for future generations.